Hello, welcome to News Mongolian MNB World. I am Jugdur Gambold. And uh, for our top stories, Town Totra Coal uh, Terminal set to begin operation in the second quarter of this year. Chinggis Khan International Airport earns prestigious forests are waiting for our sky tracks. Through the news, stay with us. The Town Tolga Coal Terminal, a logistics center with an impressive annual capacity of loading 20 million tons of coal for railroad transport, is scheduled to be commissioned in the second quarter of this year. This development is set to significantly enhance Mongolia's coal export capabilities, providing a crucial boost to the nation's economy. The terminal will facilitate the loading of raw coal mines from the west and east tank mines, which are among the most productive coal mines in the Tawan region. The coal will be transported through the strategic Tawan Tashar and Tawan Tashar railway corridors, linking Mongolia to major coal markets. This is designed to operate with high efficiency and precision, and the coal terminal will be equipped with a primary crusher, belt conveyors, a stacker, reclaimers, and a train loadout facility. One of the standout features of this terminal is its use of a fully automatic supervisory control and data acquisition system, which will monitor and control operations. This advanced system ensures that the entire process, from coal crashing to loading onto trains, is seamless, safe and efficient. In preparation for its full-scale operations, the terminal has already undergone successful tests. The Town Tadgar Railway LLC reported that 1,280 tons of coal was loaded onto 20 train carriages during these tests, demonstrating the terminal's capability and readiness to handle large volumes of coal. This preliminary success marks a significant milestone in the project's timeline and underscores the terminal's potential to revolutionize coal logistics in the region. This new terminal is expected to reduce transportation cost and time, increase the export volumes and improve the overall competitiveness of Mongolian coal on the global market. On April 17th, Chinggis Khan International Airport celebrated a significant achievement by receiving a prestigious four-star airport rating during the SkyTrax World Airport Awards Ceremony held in Frankfurt, Germany. This week, the official certificate was presented during a special ceremony at the airport. Chinggis Khan International Airport, Mongolia's getaway for domestic and international travel, marked a historic milestone in 2023 by serving over 1.7 million passengers. This achievement contributed to its 2024 recognition as a four-star airport by Skytrax, an esteemed international airline research and evaluation organization based in London. Skytrax Operational since 1989 assesses airports on a scale of 1 to 5 stars based on over 800 criteria including passenger services, comfort, cleanliness, environmental improvements and staff performance. The airport's evaluation highlighted several standout areas that already met the criteria for 5-star rating. These included border control, security screening, passenger waiting times, announcements, first aid services, AED equipment availability, overall comfort, ventilation, cleanliness, and restroom facilities. With only 22 airports holding a 4-star rating globally and 89 achieving 5 stars, Chinggis Khan International Airport now ranks among the top 111 airports worldwide. This recognition underscores its significant progress and commitment to excellence. The new Lambata International Airport company responsible for managing Chinggis Khan Airport has ambitious goals to maintain and elevate its service standards through comprehensive cooperation and swift enhancements. The airport's operations involve over 18 government and private sector organizations including Border Control, Customs, Immigration and the Civil Aviation Authority and various commercial service offices. As of May 20th, Chinggis Khan International Airport 
hosts regular flights operated by 20 foreign and domestic airlines, connecting passengers to 23 international and seven local destinations. Please uh, take a look at current affairs of Mongolia. The event features a full marathon spanning 42 kilometers and 195 meters, along with half marathons covering a distance of 21 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 5 and 1.5 kilometers. Special Olympics categories for distance 0.8 kilometers and half kilometer will also be included. Notably, half of the registered participants are enrolled for distances of 10 km or more, with participant numbers increasing annually. For the convenience of attendees and spectators, a food court will be set up during the Ulaanbaatar Marathon 2024, with catering opportunities available for individuals and restaurants through collaboration with Lemon Praise, as indicated by Sanchurma, a press representative for the high pay company. International interest in the marathon is evident, with participation requests already received from countries such as Kenya, Japan, Germany, Great Britain, France, and the Russian Federation, as well as online registrations from Australia, Austria, the USA, and England. Presently, 4,334 requests have been received, with 1,678 confirmation of online registration. Please take a look at currency exchange rates provided by the Central Bank of Mongolia. Now please have a foreign news partnered with international news agencies. A Bangkok hospital says several of the more seriously injured people who were on the Singapore Airlines flight that hit a severe turbulence will need spine surgery. Dr. Adan and Kitrana Paypal, director of Cemetery Serena Karin Hospital, said it was too early to say if a patient would be permanently paralyzed. 20 people remained in intensive care and 73-year-old British man died after the Boeing 777, which was flying from London's Heathrow Airport to Singapore, suddenly descended sharply after hitting turbulence over the Andaman Sea on Tuesday. The ICU patients included six Britons, six Malaysians, three Australians, two Singaporeans and one person each from Hong Kong, New Zealand and the Philippines. Passengers have described the sheer terror of the aircraft shattering, loose items flying and injured people lying paralyzed on the floor of the plane. The turbulence sent the plane, which was carrying 211 passengers and 18 crew members, on 6,000 foot around 1,800 meter descent in about three minutes. The flight from London to Singapore was diverted to Thailand. Russian missiles slammed into Ukraine's second largest city in the northeast of the country and killed at least six civilians early on Thursday, officials said, as the Kyiv's army labored to hold off an intense cross-border offensive by the Kremlin's larger and better equipped forces. <laughs> At least 16 people were injured as S-300 missiles struck the city of Kharkiv, regional governor Alek Sinihpudov said. The sound of 15 explosions reverberated around the city of some 1 million people. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called the attack extremely cruel. He expressed renewed frustration at not getting enough air defense systems from the country's western partners to prevent the barrages after more than two years of unrelenting war. 
The city of Kharkiv, which is the capital of the region of the same name, lies about 20 kilometers from the Russian border. Moscow's troops have in recent weeks captured villages in the area as part of a broad push and analysts say they may be trying to get within artillery range of the city. In what is shaping up to be Ukraine's biggest test since Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, outnumbered and outgunned Ukrainian forces are being pressed at several points along the about 1,000-kilometer front line that sneaks from north to south along the eastern side of the country. With Ukraine short of air defenses and waiting for more Western military support that recently started tricking in, its army has been pushed backwards in places while Russia has pounded its power grid and civilian areas. Two recently graduated European astronauts have been assigned their first space flights and look set to journey to the International Space Station in 2026. Sofia Adonat and Rafael Legers are both members of ESA's most recent class of astronauts. Selected in 2022 and recently concluded their one-year basic training. French astronaut Sophie Adeno and Belgian Luxembourgish astronaut Raphael Lejoie look set to become the first two astronauts from the ESA astronaut class of 2022 to embark on long-duration missions to the International Space Station. Both look set to journey to the ISS in 2026. Adeno first, followed by Liegeois. Born in France in 1982, 41-year-old Adeno is an Air Force helicopter test pilot. It's incredible. I, I'm really lacking words to describe how happy I am. Uh, but yes, it's, uh, it's going to be a great adventure starting now. Uh, two years of uh, a lot of intense training, a lot of modules uh, to qualify, a lot of uh, new scientific experiments to learn. And um, yes, it's going to be dense and intense, I know already, but I'm ready for that. Born in Belgium in 1988, 36-year-old Liegeois is a biomedical engineer and neuroscientist who has researched degenerative diseases of the nervous system. He also flies hot air balloons and gliders. I feel great. I feel great. We just had the news of the assignments and I'm super excited. It's a new step in this incredible adventure. It comes a bit earlier than what I was expecting, to be honest, but no, it's great. Well, it does make a difference very concretely in the sense that I know that uh, if everything goes as planned, I will be flying in 2026, full 2026. And concretely, that means moving to Houston and having a specific training there in Houston to prepare the mission. European Space Agency has negotiated with NASA for three places on future Artemis moon missions, although those places will likely to go to the more senior astronauts, according to ESA Director General Joseph Aschbacher. The agency is also supplying the service model for the Orion crew capsule. ESA relies on NASA and others to get its astronauts to space. ESA says it intends all five of its recent astronaut graduates to embark on missions to the International Space Station by 2030. Another 12 were selected as reservists but were not sent for basic training. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying tuned. We'll see you next time with more news and updates. Have a nice day.